first of all i would like to know how many of you has have already taken the course java pretty much people right so can i expect a interactive session if if it can be interactive and if you can answer all these things we'll go into something which we will be doing it here if you have a java project how you will be connecting it to the database how will you be iterating the data fetching the data saving the data so can you be interactive you can say yes or no okay fine so we'll go to the first thing about java java is object oriented what is an object can anyone try it out what is an object so i can call like human being is a object the entities are eyes ears which will hear hearing is a functionality of the ears so you can say in simple terms i don't want you to say definitions which were memorized okay i want the level of understandability from you that's it so platform independent what do you mean by platform independent you can run in any machine if you, you you can code in mac you can code in linux machine you can go to in a windows machine but still the functionality whatever you can just create a var file you have a apache server you can run it in any machine that's what platform independent means one more thing it's simple people call it simple why you have many predefined functions available unlike c you have string as a data type so string manipulations operations are very easy so we call it as simple and secure what do you mean by secure language is c not secure what do you mean by secure like you can make it simple it runs as a class file so class file is not readable can you read class files no so it is secure and also you can say few examples like okay let's have something like this so everyone has seen urls of different websites right so for example facebook so you will have www.facebook.com/slash/your-user-name okay this is the basic thing is a, it's a url and also you could see something like id is equal to or ref is equal to and so this is a url we will fetch it as variable so id and reference is equal to something reference is equal to guest we will fetch this id and reference okay we will fetch this ids and reference as a http session variable so if you pass it like this id is equal to some username i am giving for example in that id is equal to something i am just fetching it out here you can you can generate mysql injections in it you know what mysql injection is so i can do this select star from person where id is equal to something 1 2 3 4 whatever say one this is a person table id and username you are having something email so you are passing this parameter id 1 okay you will have it as a string string id is equal to 1 if you pass it like this also you can append say for example you can edit the url you can always edit the url right have you tried editing the url so you can edit the url you can put one drop table person so if you write this it will execute it will execute if you execute this query if you write this statement execute query of query this will be executed along with the string drop table person and you are dead you will be responsible right you are a programmer so how can you restrict it if you are passing 
in a URL and you are getting it as a session variable and you are running this query, execute query, how can you restrict it? Um, I'm speaking about Java. Java itself has an inbuilt thing to do it. So you can use prepared statements. You can st set the string. You can use prepare statement. Prepared statement query is equal to write this. Instead of passing the variable here, you can put a question mark. You put a question mark and then write query dot set string of one comma id. So what Java does is it precompiles it. It converts everything into literals. So you cannot do SQL injections. For example, in many sites which is not secure will have this thing, username and password. Just put the username and password as or equal to. It will log you in. You don't require a password. You don't need to hack. You don't need to do anything. It's just minimum SQL injection. Just have to do it. You can try it out with different websites. And you cannot trust website which sends you password. You, it has to have some encryption, MD5, something like that. So try it out. If you have any websites you think which is not secure, you can try it out. You put your username and put password as or equal to, then it will let you in. So you can, you can do it on Facebook or equal to. It will not let you in because it will say enter a valid password. Because of this, they are converting things to literals before putting, as, putting it as a string. So MySQL is vulnerable if you don't know how to use it. So this is one among the things which will increase the security. And you can say multi-threading. What multi-threading is? Give an example for me, please. What multi-threading is? Uh, it's valid. But I would like you to say something which we face it every day. IRCTC, take IRCTC. You have multiple threads so that many people can log in and book their tickets at the same time. If you want to go from Mumbai to Delhi, multiple people can book their tickets. But they will have this thing. Say, if the ticket count is only 60, 60 seats are only available. Like 59 people can log in and book 59 seats, it will not be a problem. But for only one seat, if two people are fighting for, so what happens is whoever pays the transaction is faster, they will get it, right? So it will come under multi-threading. They will allow excess users, multiple users, but you can book seats only which is limited and which is available. So it can run on multi-threading. And high performance, you can say it is fast. Like string is a predefined data type. You don't have to manipulate string as a character array. So this is a it can run in all the platforms, platform independent. And objects are like take human beings, take car, car, the color of the car, the gear, the speed. It will be different objects, the states. And behavior is like changing the gear, like hearing in human beings is a function. It's a behavior of the ear. You cannot expect it to smell. So that's it. So these are the basic definitions. I don't want you to teach any definition. OK? Is this fine? Can I skip this? Class methods and instance variables. Instance variables are something which you call inside the function. The, it will be available for that particular instance. One more thing I would like to suggest is use a single naming convention. OK? Naming convention should be unique and also it, it all, everyone should be following the same naming convention. For example, the class names should be starting with caps, uppercase, and then the next word also should start with uppercase. There is no nothing called as this should be uppercase and this should be uppercase. Okay? You cannot do like first underscore class. This is the naming convention of a variable. 
camel cases are variable convention for uh, naming convention for the variables please don't do it one more thing if you are naming a variable okay for example for so can everyone see it i'm writing a for variable uh, sorry for loop inside that i am writing a variable i what do you mean by the variable i you cannot write variable names that way just write it as iterator variable this is used for the iterator so write it as iterator variable which will make the code easily readable we everybody knows okay i is a iterator variable can i not use it for anything else so for avoiding the confusion write proper names it's okay even if you have nicknames that's okay but you have a name for the school or college right so use proper names for anything it will be readable and also it will not be redundant for example in the same code you will have i for int i for int i you can use multiple int i which is not a good thing to do so these are the naming conventions case sensitivity is very important okay and method names also should be the first starting should be in the lower case and then second word should be upper case don't do multiple things if you follow a naming convention do follow it this is a simple program to say hello world what it does is hello world app hello hello is an object of this class and then it will be called when you call the function say hello okay this is a very basic syntax of the java i, I think everybody knows it okay can you call the hello say hello function without creating a object yeah you can make it static and also one more thing you can do you can call inside the constructor you can write the system dot out dot print ln inside the constructor okay you can do that so we go to a uh, important topic access modifiers everyone knows access modifiers sure what do you mean by public can anyone say please be louder what is public so you can access it inside like any class any package any subclass it is accessible to the world like it can be called anywhere protected you can call inside the class inside the same package inside the subclass but not for the entire world like if it is going outside the package you cannot be able to access it no modifier it's default no modifier would be the default thing and it can be accessed inside the class inside the package not inside the subclass and not inside the like you cannot access it outside the package and private you can access it only inside the class so you should be um, so everybody knows what is public static void main string arguments everybody writes the line right public static void main string arguments what is the meaning of it what is public it's access modifier it can be accessed from any any class it can be called for example i am outside the package but still i am call i can call the package and i can call the main variable main functions static it runs on its own you don't have to call it void main void is there is no return type and main is the main function this is an example of a access modifier class so it shows what values will be fetched when you call each and every modifiers okay you can try it out this will be available you can try it out the code will be you can try it out later okay so what is this there is something called as did this dot pub this dot private this dot protected what is this this the reference to the object which is actually there now this instance whichever is available we call this so they are extending a subclass which will extend the base class access modifier you use extends keyword for extending the class like if you want to derive something from the previous class you use extend and you use subclasses we call this as subclass so these are the keywords which cannot be changed few keywords are available these are non access modifiers final is final you cannot change it okay you cannot change the value of a variable you set it as final nobody can change it even if you write it again final pi is equal to something if you write pi again it will throw you an error you cannot redefine a variable abstract classes can abstract class be instantiated so we can just say an ab abstract class is like you know um say figures 
and its area. So it will have a sub function class figures and also area. The figure can be anything. It can be a trapezoid, it can be a circle, it can be a rectangle, it can be a triangle, anything. And its area will be different. Every uh, figure's area is different. So you can extend it. For example, class triangle extends abstract class something. Okay? You can e extend it. That's why we use this. It cannot be instantiated. It can be just extended. You can use it as a mother. That's it. It cannot be directly called and thought. Strict FP is strictly flo floating point. It cannot be redefined. E even if you put 10, it will be taken as 10.00. Synchronized access only by one thread at a time. Say, uh, for example, there is only one track and two trains has to travel in the same track. So they use something called a synchronization. They have signals. One train goes and then the next train comes in. If it goes together, it will be a problem, right? So this is called synchronization in layman's terms. And volatile, changed unexpectedly by other parts of the code. Like, it can be changed. So finally, we have come to variables. Variables can be classified as local variable, class variable, and instance variables. So class variables will be declared. So for example, Okay, if you write class, public class, public class person, if you say a variable, string, this is called a class variable. If you have at the start, it, it is declared at the start. Like you write a class and you declare it, it is called a class variable. And local variables are inside the loops. For example, you use a iterator variable. It can be localized. It needn't be declared in the class because it will not be used again and again. And instance variables. Instance variables are something which you call like inside a specific class. It cannot be called outside. For example, you write it as public. It can be taken from anywhere. And a variable can also be a object. Has anyone tried it out? A variable can can also be an object. Okay, that is that is the main thing we are going to use here. For example, there is a table person. Okay, you are fetching a list, say ID, name, date of birth, and email ID. Okay, how do you save it? You are writing a query. Select star from person where state is equal to 13. So you have a list of rows available. How do you save it? Can anyone say how do you save it? Please answer me. Can anyone say how do you save the number of rows which you fetch? Like you can go to MySQL and write like select star from person where state is equal to. Thirteen. So you get a list of five rows. How do you save it? Please, can anyone say me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can st store it as an array of array list of something objects. Okay, person is an object. You can write it as a bean. You can define a person class. Say, for example, this person will have a name. Okay, will have a like date. date date of birth he will have an email and he has a state this you call as a bean class you define the variables of that object what you can do is you can like when you are calling this MySQL statement, after fetching, it will fetch the number of rows. You can save it as a person, single entity. You can call one person. You can set its name, person1 dot name, set name. 
is equal to this person dot set dob person dot set email person dot set state you can do all these things you can save it as an object and put it in an array list when you can you can iterate it you can iterate the array list and you can get the number of rows for you okay it will be a distinct thing okay this is how you save it please go through this array list like it is very important that you learn array list and iterating things and representing things that's what you do it in a report right if you want to say how many people got a grade how do you know you have to fetch the data and put it you have to represent it that's why we need jsps we need html we need frameworks to represent data so how many of you has actually tried writing a project with database connections so what is important in having a database connection drivers use drivers and what is inside the driver we copy paste from google class dot for name is equal to da 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 that's that's it right okay a mysql connection is very important you just please go through how it connects to the database how how it actually returns the fetched array how can you save it as objects how can you represent the data okay try doing all these things i think this is all are all minimal things which are in the slide you need to work on something which is not there in the slide that's why i kept mentioning you sql injections you have to write a secure code you have to write certain following following certain naming conventions i think everybody knows all these things and yeah this is what what is void what is public what is static everything is hashed here and the principles of object oriented programming i'm not here to i'm not a java teacher i'm not here to teach each and everything about java i'm here to say something which is required to program here okay can i skip this if you all know what is abstraction encapsulation inheritance polymorphism it's all saying okay i can give you examples <laughs> polymorphism function overloading function overriding we can say all these things these are all very simple programs i i expect that every everyone will know they have taken courses in java the thing here is you have to connect to a database we have to fetch array write logic and do this okay um i think we have already discussed this the meaning of abstract class Ab abstract class cannot be instantiated you, you cannot call a object of abstract class although you can be, it can be subclass you can extend it and you can use the same functions and you can override it that's where comes polymorphism abstract class for example i i told you like figure the shape of the figure and also area it can be a vague thing okay you you are supposed to do all these things i have given you a template so you can extend it to any particular figure and a particular area you can put as you like it this is extends is used for inheritance uh, say we say encapsulation data hiding data hiding what is that has anyone tried it what is data hiding can anyone answer me uh, that is called data hiding and also you uh, it will be in a class file when it returns as a array list okay try writing let our list be a person person dot get i we write i as a iterator variable so if you put that you will get at something at something at something you will not be getting the proper array list like it cannot be it will not represent name is equal to this is equal to age is equal to state is equal to not show you have to iterate it and everything it will show things only when you know what exists inside the array list okay you know that's a the person array list but you don't know the exact variables in the array list only programmers will know say for example date of birth is a date you cannot expect it as a string okay you don't know you the external users may not know what is what you have defined as a person i can put a name person and i can write something else trash so nobody knows it that is data hiding nobody knows un unless the programmer lets you know okay this is a bean class this is what i have defined that's what we saw polymorphism figures and area again you can take it 
so function over uh, overloading is something you use different kinds of parameters different uh, the number of parameters you put it, it is all function overloading and function overriding is like you have a parent class and you inherit it and then you write a function inside that with the same name it will override the parent function this is function overloading you can see so some sum of two integers a float and an integer three different integers it will all give you it is all called function overloading and function overriding is as i have explained if you inherit a class you can override the class of the function of the thing which is available in the parent class it will not be taking that it will take only things which you write in the subclass so yeah we have come to a very important topic threads when you write any code you have to use threads so what is the use of thread we have discussed several examples right irctc booking you use threads so uh, when you open the website like at 9:58 it says 2 minutes remaining your session gets expired that is also a thread you save everything on thread you can make things sleep okay don't do this well uh, sending a email uh, okay so let's say you get mails from different um, subscribers right okay you can subscribe to pin interest pin interest will send you mails are you getting any subscribed emails in your mailing list sometimes things go to spam sometimes they go to spam because there is no proper interval in the mail sent it is because of that so if they send more than 1000 mails in a minute they will actually identify it as spam google yahoo everything so it goes in the spam folder so you put a sleep of a second or two after 50 emails after 100 emails 30 second you will not be marked as spam so you can also send if you have a list of email addresses but the possibility is that you you will be marked spam if you don't put a sleep that's where thread comes into picture you can use threads for sleeping making the work to sleep for some time so thread thread can also be used when we use synchronized operators for example two dependent things are there and you have to execute the second thing only after the first thing does it it does the input it takes the input of the first thing so you can put the second thing at sleep until the first process you don't have to waste the memory till then so you just put things in sleep so when you start it goes into runnable state and it is running you can make it sleep wait or yield until the next waiting state or something and yeah important thing is exception handling you're going to help me out in this okay we will write a program to compute factorial everybody knows factorial right people will recursively do it so if i give a input of y you will get 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 you get the result you get this as a result so what are the exceptions which can be there i give like int in enter a integer we give a box so what are the exceptions which can be available here can you say me list out the exceptions please yeah first one is entering a character if you enter a character it should throw an error right you have to validate it it is an exception you cannot put a character you cannot put a string you cannot put any different data type and next one you cannot put you cannot put negative numbers floating points then you cannot put float it has to be strict say even if you put a integer say i put a 100 do you think factorial will compute i i'm just saying for int what we will do is 
we will iterate it with i star something which is coming so that it is a recursive function right so even if you put this if you return an integer again it will throw an exception for 100 it is not a integer like if you multiply 100 into 99 into 98 the return will not be an integer so we should make sure that even if you enter an integer if you have to get a proper answer you have to define the data type else it will throw an exception you have to handle the exception that's why we want exception handling okay so in java like which can throwable like exception can be throwable can be errors it can be exception and runtime exception in runtime exception you have null pointer exception number format exception this comes under number format exception if you try to return the factorial of 100 as an integer you will have number format exception if you try to return a floating point value as an integer it will become a number format exception make sure that you don't make all these mistakes even if you make the mistakes you have to write an exception class in the catch in the finally block so that it will print what actually the exception is and you can debug it index out of bound where do you get index out of bound exception array so you always get okay everybody has got it io exception sql exception malformed url exception when you cannot um, fetch the variables in the url so have you noticed they generally use ampersand simple to separate variables in the url and they say id is equal to this thing and password is equal to this thing they use and as a delimiter in the url so you can pass things easily that's why people use post methods instead of get in the html forms so you you don't have to see everything in the url catching exceptions it, it's very important that you catch all the exceptions and you de debug the code you will know things when you put in wrong test cases that's called destructive testing like when you want okay your enemy has written a code you want to destruct it de say that you have written a shit code so what do you do you enter malicious values so for your own code also you have to do that to make sure things work and what is the importance of finally block try catch finally 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 block always executes irrespective of whatever is hanging there say the try is having some exception and you want to re return something at least you want to return a dummy value so you can put it in finally and you can close the connections you can close the prepared statements you can close the result sets so your memory will be free even though java has a automatic garbage collection thing you can also do it to increase the speed ah we have already spoken about this right constructor you don't have to call a constructor it will be automatically executed and things under that also will be automatically executed it has the same name as a function name so these are the references you can go through uh, do you have any doubts oh, we have completed well before time what is the use of interface um normally we are not using interfaces as such okay like here but in iit bombay x in other side you will have a class so in our code we are not going to write any interfaces we are not going to describe anything generic to something else okay the first thing if you have to um, inherit certain characteristic say for example what is your name vasudev vasudev has a good characteristic of asking questions it can be inherited to someone else sit, sitting on the first bench what is your name abhishek abhishek can inherit certain qualities of vasudevs so that is why we use that like normally we don't use that okay in the code uh, when you have mis systems we don't uh, use inheritance as such we just try to collect data manipulate it fetch it like our work will be most like data analyst job and you have to put in a certain logic to have a sorting of whatever you want the collection of data you have a collection of data and you manipulate it and you display it that's what we want anything else so the important concept is that you write my sql query 
you have to know how to manipulate it, how to save it in a hurry list, how to iterate it, how to display it. And also, um, you can call certain functions in Ajax. Everybody should know Ajax and little bit of JavaScript. If you know document.getElementById, that is more than enough. And you could find all validations. I think everybody knows it, right? And to display it, you can put a name, you can put different variables. Say, for example, you want to display something, person's name. As I mentioned you, it encrypts it. So it doesn't say a person's name until you call the person person name. Person dot name. You can have it as a name in the HTML tag and you can display it. That is how you display it. Anything else? That's it. You can wind up the session. So if you have any doubts, you can mail me at abhinaya.cse.iitb on Java. Okay? I'm not a Java teacher, but still. Thank you.